Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Alazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com and today we'll talk about the EUMDR extension vote, the notified bodies that are certified under the EUMDR, the changes in the EU, Spain, UK, Switzerland, Belgium, so a lot of changes, also in Middle East, in the USA, in Brazil. So there are a lot of changes that we'll talk about for this March 2023 update, so buckle up. First, we want to thank our sponsor Medboard for helping us create this edition by providing us all the regulatory updates that we are discussing today. So, who is Medboard? Medboard, the regulatory research and intelligence platform, is focused on solving the problem with increasing news and data and new requirements as regulatory intelligence, post-market surveillance, clinical literature review and many more. We are making trusted MedTech information and data more accessible, creating the largest information portal search and the best tools for review, intelligence and portfolio management. We are already changing people's lives like you by reducing tedious manual and repetitive work or saving much time. Contact us at medboard.com to learn more about us and do a free trial. Let's discuss now the latest development in healthcare regulations. Today, we are talking about the recent extension of the EU MDR 2017-745 and IVDR 2017-746 transitional period, which was approved in the Europe. As part of this extension, the European Commission has published a question and answer guide to provide practical guidances on the implementation of the regulation. So the number of the regulation is 2023-607. This guide aims to answer common questions related to the extension of the transitional period and the removal of the sell-off periods. So what are some of the questions that are addressed in this guide? Here are a few examples that I have selected. So so which devices can benefit from the extended transitional period? Important to understand the, the scope. How can manufacturers demonstrate that their legacy devices benefit from the extension of the transitional period? So um, yeah, this is mainly something that is really also important for people. And also what are the necessary elements of a formal application lodged by the manufacturers? Which notified body is responsible for carrying out appropriate surveillance when a written agreement in accordance with the article 120.3 uh, uh, is signed between the MDR, the manufacturer and the notified body de designated under the EU MDR. So all those questions are answered within this uh, document. If you are interested in learning more about this extended transitional period and the practical aspect of implementing the new regulations, we are encouraging you to check out the question and answer guide published in the European Union Commission. We'll include a link uh, to the guide in the show notes of this episode, so don't hesitate to go there. In addition to the question and answer guide, uh, the show notes also include information on a BSI webinar on this topic and links to resources from different countries, including the UK, Switzerland. So make sure to check out the show notes for more information because a lot of countries are talking about that. I have even asked ChatGPT, the AI tool, to read the announcement made by Switzerland and to redo it like it was in the 18th century. So if you want to check that, go to the show notes and you'll get the post from LinkedIn. Team NB is informing us on some changes. Looks like the European Commission is giving notified bodies a bit of a break, if I can say. So they only have now to go through a complete reassessment every five years now. Before it was three years, now it's five years. It's like getting a five years pass for good behavior or at least not completely messing up, so which I hope it's the case. I can imagine that notified bodies are celebrating this news uh, with a big sigh of relief and maybe some champagne. So it's like, phew, we have made it through another five years. So, but don't worry, medical device manufacturers, you won't be left alone. So notified bodies will be still under continuous monitoring and uh, assessment by the authorities. Uh, it's like the European Commission that is uh, saying, we trust you notified bodies, but we are still having uh, keeping an eye on, on you. So <laughs> mainly this is, looks like that. So, so let's raise the glass uh, to the new regulation and hope that it leads to more efficient 
efficient processing of certification by notified bodies. Maybe we'll even get more um, uh, get more medical device approved fast as they show uh, they should have more time to take care of their customers now. Good news for all medical device manufacturers. In the European Union, the European Commission has recently launched a new platform called the UDI Help Desk. UDI stands for Unique Device Identification and it's a system that assigns a unique identifier for medical devices for better tracking and traceability. The UDI Help Desk is de designed to uh, educate manufacturers on what UDI is and how to use it effectively. The platform provides access to useful resources, including educational content, videos, and frequently asked questions. You'll find information on UDI assignments, UDI carrier, and all other relevant topics. While the platform has received positive feedback, we want to hear from you as one LinkedIn commenter told me on my link, this is good, but not great. We'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the UDI help desk. Is it meeting your needs? What could we improve on it? Let us know in the comments. Good news for the medical device industry, another notified body. So the European Commission has appointed a new notified body for the EU medical device regulation, bringing the total number of accredited notified bodies to 38. So congratulations to Suzu from uh, Suzu Test from Germany on their appointment as the newest notified body. It's no secret that the demand for notified body services has been high and we are sure Suzu Test uh, phones is ringing off the hook now with inquiries from manufacturers looking for uh, work to work with them. So we wish them all the best and look forward to seeing their contribution to the medical device industry. After UDIDI, after basic UDIDI, we have now a new superhero, Master UDIDI. <laughs> I'm sure all other countries will be jealous of us or will hate us as they have also to apply that. So the European Union has come up with a new system for identifying contact lenses called the Master UDIDI. Basically, it's an addition to the UDI system that was introduced a few years ago to keep track of medical devices and in vitro medical devices, their devices. The UDI system was put in place to make sure that medical devices are traceable and safe, but for some devices like contact lenses, there are so many possible combinations of parameters that are reporting uh, all the details about, uh, I mean, this is too much, I mean, for them. So in order, in other places that use the UDI system, manufacturers of devices like contact lenses are sometimes given a pass like let's go and don't have to report all the nitty gritty details in the database. But that's not the case in the EU, too complex. So they came up with this master UDIDI to solve the problem. So the master UDIDI is a big umbrella that groups similar contact lenses together based on things like base curve and diameter. And there's also the new type of identifier, the UDI PI, which includes the things like cylinder, uh, uh, axis, etc. So this, to sum up, the master UDI idea is a new way to identify contact lenses that group similar uh, lenses together. And the UDIPI is a specific identifier for contact lenses with some parameters like power, cylinder, and axis. So yeah, I hope you understood all that, but uh, it's mainly important for you. Team NB is issuing a training on IVDR technical uh, documentation for manufacturers. These trainings will cover the IVDR requirements related to technical documentation and also share notified bodies inside, which is great. It's happening on, the, on September 7th remotely and will be presented in English. The training is limited to 40 organizations with up to two connections of staff member per, uh, per organization. So don't miss your chance to join. Check all the details in the show notes. We have placed everything there. Now we've got some exciting news for a new training. So we are thrilled to announce the 25th edition of the EUMDR training, which is going to be held from May 8th 2023 until May 12, 2023. Now I know what you're thinking. Training sounds boring. So this is a lot of things that we are hearing. But trust me, this is going to be a training like no other. And the best part is it's all remote. So you can participate in it from the comfort of your own home or office if you're at work. 
Uh, so over the course of the of five days, we'll be driving uh, you through the EU MDR 2017-745. On day one, we'll start with the overview of the EU MDR, including the timeline and significant changes. On day two, we'll focus on the economic operators and PRC. On day three, we'll cover qualification as a medical device, classification as a medical device, and conformity assessment uh, with the notified bodies. Um, then on day four, we'll explore Explore the creation of a technical file, technical documentation, quality management system also, clinical evaluation, post-marketing surveillance, PMCF, so a lot of technical information. And finally, on day, on day five, we'll review the UDAMED database and the UDI requirements. Now, here is the exciting part. Once you've completed the training, you'll have the opportunity to test your knowledge and earn the Green Belt Certificate for EU MDR. So this certificate is recognized worldwide and can be shown to any organization as a proof of knowledge on EU MDR, like a notified body, for example. So to register for the training and get more details, simply head over to our website at school.easymedicaldevice.com slash course slash GB25. Get ready to expand your knowledge and take your career to the next level with our EU MDR training so see you there attention everyone the spanish agency for medicine and health uh, products or aemps has recently announced the approval of the new royal decree on sanitary products by the council of ministries so this new decree uh, follows the guidance of the eu mdr and aims to protect the health promote the transparency and encourage innovation now as we all know the eu mdr should be applied as is but there are still several elements that should be decided by each competent authority. The new Royal Decree on Sanitary Products specifies several important issues that are relevant to Spain, such as the determination of the competent authority, manufacturing of in-house products, reprocessing of single-use products, market surveillance and control obligations, and foreign trade requirements, among others. It is important to note that even though EU MDR is directly applicable in all countries of the European Union, that are, there are still aspects that are left to the regulation of each member state. The new Royal Decree on Sanitary Products provides clear guidance on these areas and ensure that Spain is in compliance with the EU regulation. Remember, it's important for all competent authorities to communicate any decisions on specific aspects of the EU MDR so we can all work together to ensure a high level of safety and protection for patients and users. Good news for healthcare in the UK. The MHRA, along with the Office for Life Science and the Department of Health and Social Care, have published an update on their reform proposals for medical devices regulatory reform. The proposals aim to drive innovation and growth in the UK while ensuring patient safety remains at the heart of the UK's regulatory approach. In my personal opinion, this is a great move toward improving a patient safety and supporting innovation in the UK. The MHRA has always been a great actor in the field of healthcare and I'm certain that their involvement will help the UK's healthcare system become even better. The advisory group has taken a patient-centered approach and the resulting proposals have the potential to provide world-class support for innovators and best-in-class protections for patient safety. The group has identified three priority areas. So let's look at those. So the first one is international recognition. They try to get recognition from everywhere. The routes for innovation also that should be open. So they try to get more products that are innovative on their system and system capacity. So to increase the possibility for their people, notified bodies also or approved bodies to check everything. They have agreed on the need for this reset proposal to create a step change in the approach to regulation. I'm excited to see that how the MHA will move forward on this direction and wish them a lot of success. Okay, I want to share some important news with all the economic operators in Belgium who are involved in the medical device sector. So this is something new apparently. So starting from 2023, a new system for financing the market surveillance of medical devices will be applied in Belgium. The aim of this system is to ensure 
a more equitable fee between the different actors in the industry. Each operator will be required to pay a contribution consisting with their turnover and the level of risk associated with their activities, as well as the workload they represent for the Belgian Federal Agency for Medicine and Health Products, which is the AFMPS. Until now, only operators who provided medical devices to retailers or end users in Belgium were required to pay the contribution to the AFMPS. However, with the new financing system, all operators in the medical device sector are required to declare their turnover, even easy medical device. <laughs> so who is responsible for, this contrib for the contribution? If you operate in Belgium in the medical devices sector in any of the following roles, then you are responsible for the contribution. So manufacturers first, authorized representative, importer, assembler of system and uh, procedure pack, uh, manufacturers of custom-made devices also, distributors, so you will receive an email every year asking you to declare your turnover related to medical devices for activities carried out in Belgium and subject to contribution. The turnover to be reported is the turnover for the previous year. To declare your turnover, use the AFMPS application, which is available on the AFMPS web portal. In the beginning of the following year, you will receive an invoice from the AFMPS with the amount to be paid as well as the structured communication. Wait for this invoice to make your payment. So maybe if you, you don't receive, it's a phishing. So be careful of that. So stay tuned for an AFMPS email that you should receive soon, I hope. Swiss Medic, the Swiss agency responsible for the regulations and supervisions of the therapeutic products, has recently issued a document on its inspection of 27 medical device manufacturers in Switzerland. So the focus of the inspection was to investigate how the new regulations for class one medical devices were being implemented within those manufacturers. So since May 2021, manufacturers of class one medical devices are required to ensure that their device comply with the new regulations and Swiss Medic must be notified of these devices. The new regulation also stipulate that devices must be subject to market surveillance to verify that they offer patients the promised benefits and that no unexpected risks occur. During the inspection, Swiss Medic found that 11% of the manufacturers whose declaration of conformity were reviewed were unable to demonstrate fulfillment of the new legal requirements. This means that these manufacturers could not provide proof of compliance with the new regulation and were prohibited from placing their devices on the Swiss market. Additionally, 70% of the post-market surveillance documentation reviewed failed to meet the legal requirements. So indicating that these manufacturers are not really adequately implementing the medical device uh, ordinance, so the medical device rule in Switzerland, particularly with regards to post-market surveillance. So Swiss Medic has notified the affected manufacturers of corresponding measures and will continue to monitor uh, corrective actions uh, within those uh, manufacturers. The Swiss database on medical device currently is being currently developed and will also increase the transparency for devices on the Swiss market and give Swiss Medic a data resource for more comprehensive, wider ranging controls. So we wish Swiss Medic will be successful on this uh, program. And I think this is also something that other member states of the European Union will be doing with their manufacturers. So um, yeah, we hear that from Swiss Medic, but I'm sure other member states are doing that. So if you are a class one medical device uh, manufacturer, then don't just issue a declaration of conformity saying that you are complying to the UMDR, have also the right documentation to show that because you may be visited by uh, an authority. Okay, let's now move to another part of the world. So. We are talking now about Middle East. So recently, the Saudi um, Food and Drug Authority, SFDA, has issued a guidance regarding reporting 
or notifying changes. These changes can be categorized as significant or non-significant changes. So what does that mean exactly? Manufacturers of medical devices are required to evaluate, verify and validate any changes according to the accepted procedures in the manufacturer's quality management system. They must also categorize the changes as significant or non-significant and report or notify the SFDA accordingly. If the change is significant, the manufacturer must report it to the SFDA within 10 days of its occurrence and update the relevant applications on the GHAD system with the medical device change form and the relevant documents. On the other hand, if the change is non-significant, the manufacturer must only notify the SFDA within 30 days of its occurrence by sending an email with the medical device change form and relevant documents. So don't miss this change form that is at the end of the guidance and maybe update your quality management system with this requirement if you are selling to the uh, Saudi Arabia. Everything is on the show notes if you want to look at that also. Okay, next topic now. It is the registration of medical devices in uh, still a Middle East country, Bahrain. So basically the government has released a new guidance called the Guidance for the Registration of Medical Devices, which outlines the process for importing medical devices into the country. So now, why is it important? Well, by registering medical devices, it, is unsure, it ensures that they meet the international standards of quality and safety. This means that any medical device that comes into the country has been thoroughly checked and is safe to be used by the patients in the country. Plus, it makes it easier for end users to contact local author authorized representative if they have any questions or concerns. So, the guide includes an electronic system that records all data relating to the device and the establishment, including the name of the device, serial number, country of origin, and shelf life. Which reminds me a bit of the Udamed. This makes it easier to manage and track medical devices in the country. So check this guide if you are placing medical devices in the uh, in Bahrain. Everything is on the show notes. You have it. Um, you have it mainly in the English language. Some news coming from Brazil. <laughs> so the Brazilian Health uh, Regulation Agency, so Anvisa, has launched an experimental online platform called Inotivizza. Inotivizza. This new platform will allow users of medical devices to report adverse events directly to the manufacturer of products subject to health surveillance. So this means that if a user experiences any unwanted or unexpected effects, they can notify the manufacturers of the medical device directly. The system will also enable the consumer to track the progress of their notification and manufacturers will investigate the reports and respond to Anvisa and the citizen about the problem and measures adopted in relation to the complaints. So um, the eNotivizza platform will ensure that complaints are stored safely in a governmental environment and citizens will have access to information on preventive and remedial actions taken by companies in response to the reported cases. It is important also to note that the personal data will not be shared with the company, so it will be private. The first stage of the implementation of the, this new system uh, on uh, an experimental basis will cover self-tests, for example, for COVID-19, cosmetics, sanitizing products, and hygiene products registered with Anvisa. This innovative platform will benefit the users of medical devices in Brazil and could serve also as a model for the other countries as well. Yeah, we'll be really happy to see that also in Europe. Uh, we don't have such system in Europe, you know, mainly for the moment. I don't know if Udamed is planning to do that, but for now we don't have such system in Europe. So let's see what will be coming out from it. MDSAP. So we have here the latest update of the MDSAP audit approach version 8. This is the document that we can use to understand how a medical device manufacturer will be audited for MDSAP by an audit organization. There are some changes that were happening within this document and some of those changes are those ones. So mainly uh, the first change is about 
um, the audit way to do it with the measures that they are uh, providing for production, measurement, analysis, improvement, design, etc. So they are also shuffling a bit that. The auditing organization are now also required to consider private labeled medical devices when they are verifying that the products uh, that have received marketing or authorization are imported or sold in Canada. So specific requirements for Canada. Again, for Canada, a Canadian regulatory reference has been added to the measurement, analysis and improvement process. Uh, so this is a new requirement that is mentioned there. Uh, for now, for Australia, so the Australian specific requirements, uh, some spe uh, specific requirements have, have been removed from the design and development process. For example, standards that are used to demonstrate compliance with the Australian essential principle, which is the same as the GSPR in Europe, are no longer mandatory now. So, yeah, if you want to see all the changes, they are at the end of the document and you see all the list of changes and the first one is from 7 to 8 and this is all the changes that are mentioned there. So don't hesitate to go to the document to look at that if you are MDSAP uh, certified. Okay, now let's look at the podcast of last month. So on the last month podcast episode, we have had Adam Ray with some important lessons on vigilance reporting for medical devices. I know that no one wants to hear about vigilance reporting, but you should have procedures in place in case you have some issues on the market. So to get more tips, don't miss this episode where a lot of information are provided. Then we've discussed with Marcus Emne from Houdin about post-marketing surveillance and also a lot about artificial intelligence at the service of quality and regulatory affairs people. So uh, this was really a good discussion explaining what is a proactive activities for post-marketing surveillance. So don't hesitate to look at it. Finally, this month we had Bijan Elahi talking to us about risk management for software. I had multiple customers that were struggling on risk management for their software as medical devices or software in a medical device. So decided, I decided to have this topic to try to guide software manufacturers on how they should think of risk management. So don't hesitate to look at this episode with Bijan Elahi. Okay, this is the end. I had a lot of pleasure to provide you this monthly review and I hope this will help you within your job. So don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or if you need any support. The email is info at easymedicaldevice.com. I-N-F-O at easymedicaldevice.com. I'll talk to you soon. So thank you and talk to you soon. <laughs>